And yes, I did pick my lipstick to match this yarn, so you're welcome. <laughs> Hello, lovely people of the internet, and welcome to the Novelty Knitting Podcast. I am your host, Emma. This is Elena. Yeah? Are you being a cutie? I am here to talk to you about all things knitting, crafty, basically anything cozy that takes my fancy. Elena is here to nap. To new viewers, Welcome to the podcast, and to returning viewers, thank you so much for joining me again. This episode, as always, will have mostly knitting content. I've got a very small FO for you, but lots of whips, and I also have some cross-stitch to show you guys. Now, as for tea, I have gone for a very straightforward rooibos tea today. It is not even fancy. It is Meyer brand, which is just my local supermarket, basically. There is something about rooibos tea, and maybe it has to do with when I have traditionally started drinking it, that makes me think of fall. This is just my fall tea. So grab your cup of tea, rooibos or otherwise, and let's get started. So I have one teeny tiny FO for you guys this week, and it is just a pair of these simple house slippers. I finished knitting all of these back in February, but my friend Taylor, her pair got ruined. So I dug into my stash of slippers that I had knitted back in February that were going to be for this coming Christmas, and I gave her her pair a little bit early, but I can't not give her a pair of slippers for Christmas, so I went ahead and knitted another pair. Taylor likes or oranges and pinks and purples, and I have more than enough pink and not nearly enough women in my family, so I went with pink for her slippers. All of this, as usual, is from baby blankets, leftovers from the baby blankets that I have crocheted over the last couple of years. These two in particular, this darkish pink here and the really light blush pink, I think that I used in the blanket that I gave to Taylor for her baby, so that's very appropriate. <laughs> but I cast these on early last week because I just desperately needed something that I could finish quickly. Everything that I'm working on right now seems to be taking four Ever. I have three sweaters going. I have two pairs of socks, but one of them I am teaching myself brioche for. I don't have anything easy like hats or anything like that, so I, I just needed something that I was going to be able to finish like that. And that's what these slippers are for me. I can finish a pair of them in a day, but more typically I will knit one a day and spread it over two days just because it's better on my hands. The needles that I use to knit these are not the best quality needles, and so it just makes it a little bit easier on my poor hands when I make sure to spread out the knitting a little bit more. Sliding right into the whip segment now, I am also knitting another pair of slippers. I have decided to start working on my Christmas knitting for the year, which I probably should have started doing earlier. Granted, I got all those slippers done in February, so that was a huge chunk of the knitting that I was going to have to do, so I am still going to call that a win. But I actually decided quite late in the year that I was going to either knit or cross-stitch something for basically everyone in my family. <laughs> and I don't want to give any spoilers away for that, but I have told Taylor not to watch this week's episode So I can very openly tell you guys that these slippers are going to be for Taylor It is not very often that Taylor tells me that she wants something So when she told me that she would love to have a couple extra pairs of slippers, I was like I'm on it. So that is going to be part of her gift for Christmas this year. I've knit, obviously, this pair of slippers for her, but that is part of what I get, like, her and her husband every year. So that will be going to her. I will also be knitting, like, a mini tiny pair of slippers for Gwen, 
her daughter, my goddaughter. And so then I am also knitting her an extra two pairs. That way, if one of them is in the wash, if one of them gets ruined, she still has some extras. Plus, these are such an easy knit, and it's nice to have something that I can knock out so easily and feel like I am at least somewhat prepared for Christmas. <laughs> I have started writing down all of my Christmas makes for the year. I have written down exactly what I'm going to be knitting or cross-stitching or whatever for everyone. And I have, as of the day of recording this, 108 days, I think it is, until Christmas. By the time this goes up, I think it will be 107 days. But I have been trying to get organized for Christmas because it is that time of year. If you are a maker, you should have either finished all of your Christmas stuff or you should be very carefully considering it. <laughs> what is not on my list, but I will probably do anyway, is knitting some more of these slippers for my dad and my brother. Both of them tend to wear through the slippers that I make them in December by March or April, which is more or less fine because then most of the summer they don't need them, but then as soon as it gets cool again, they don't have slippers, or they don't have handmade slippers. So I'm going to make a gift of making them a couple extra pairs of slippers this year. I swear to goodness that it feels like sometimes these slippers are the only thing that I ever finish. They knit up very quickly and they are a huge hit in my family. I've often contemplated maybe doing a different pattern or trying to make my own pattern, but these are just so easy that I don't imagine myself giving up this pattern anytime soon. Moving on to my schnee cardigan, I did finish the underarm decreases for this pattern. One of the things that is just a small detail that I really love in this pattern is that they have these artificial seams along the edge that is just a couple of uh, stockinette stitches all the way down. And those go down the side seam and the underarm seam as well. It doesn't add at all to the bulk of the sweater or anything, so it's something decorative that I can add to it without upsetting my uh, touch anxieties or anything like that. I did cast on for the sleeve. I mentioned in my last episode that I like to cast on the sleeves and do them before the body gets really long, but more importantly, in terms of this project at least, I'm really worried that I'm going to run out of yarn before I can get to the length that I want and the arm length that I want. But I am really excited because having the underarm decreases finish makes me feel like I am very much on track to be getting this thing done in no time. I have stalled out just a little bit. I would have a lot more of the arm done if it weren't for the fact that I am not enjoying working these arms right now. So I have them on my 24 inch cord. For the record, for anyone who isn't accustomed to knitting with interchangeable needles, the cords come in a variety of lengths and the cord itself is not 24 inches, but it is 24 inches approximately with the addition of my four and a half inch needles. So this 24 inch cable that I have just ended up being just a, a little bit too big for the sleeves. I can still do it. I can still knit with these needles. It's just not very fun. And it feels very much like I'm stretching out the yarn, which isn't really a pleasant feeling. But the cord that I would usually use to do magic loop is my 40 inch cord. And I can technically do it with a 32 inch cord, but I just vastly prefer using a 40 inch cord. It is so much easier to maneuver with the needles when I have that extra little bit of length to hold at the back or to hold Hold itself at the back basically. So I like to use a 40 inch cord but my 40 inch cord is currently I believe in my patchwork pullover. I'm not entirely positive. It could be in my chenille. It, <laughs> I'm just using so many needles right now across so many projects. So I ordered a couple new cords. The first one did arrive already. I ordered another 40 inch cord because that I know works for me. But I also ordered a 20 inch cord. I think a 20 inch cord if it works with my needles is going to be just ideal when it comes to knitting the kind of sleeves that I like because I do like those big poofy sleeves and it will also be really useful when I'm knitting hats. Now the reason I say that big old if when it comes to meeting with my needles is because I have a 16 inch cable 
but it does not work with these needles. So I do still have it, but the cable itself is I think about nine and a half inches or so. When I combine it with these needles, it just is not long enough. The cable isn't. I don't have any room at all to work with my needles when I try and use the 16 inch cord with my four and a half inch needles. I'm assuming that is not going to be a problem when it comes to the new cord that is coming, which is hopefully coming today as I record this, because I read through some of the reviews of the product and some of the Q&A frequently asked questions and stuff, and I am pretty sure it will work with my four and a half inch needles. But I am not holding my breath on that. I am prepared to be disappointed, and that's fine, but that is what my 40 inch backup is for. Plus, it'll be really nice to have this 40 inch when I go back to knitting the body. Right now, my project is sitting on a 32 inch needle, and it's fine. Like, it's definitely workable, and my stitches aren't going to be increased or decreasing either way from where it's at right now, but I think that I could use just a little bit more length on this. I don't think that the 32 is ideal. So hopefully I will have some sleeve progress for you next episode, but until then, the schnee is kind of being put aside right now and I'm focusing a bit more on some of my other projects. Now as for the second Banff cardigan that I am working on, oh, there's my other 40 inch cord. Yep. Okay, so I can probably switch that to a 32 inch, but first I have to get the 32 inch off of one of my other projects, so I'm still glad that I bought the extra needle. Anyway, this is still my go-to project to shove in my purse and take with me on long car rides when I think that I'm going to be having to wait in a waiting room or a long line or anything like that. It is starting to pull quite a lot, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. Looking at it in the camera, it does look pretty cool, but I am very aware that the pooling or the place of pooling is going to change as soon as I switch skeins, which is honestly going to be in not that much longer. I think that the pooling is actually most obvious in two places, so it's obvious here, of course, where we've got the bright orange, but it is almost as obvious, I think, in this random section of lack of color as well. I think ultimately though I'm just going to have to suck it up and deal with it and hope that maybe my next skein doesn't pull quite as much because I do still adore this yarn. I absolutely love these colors. I think that it is just absolutely scrumptious and the texture of it is so cool and I just really love 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 the feel of this sweater and I know that I could at least alleviate some of the pooling problem if I were to alternate skeins. I have done that before and still had a pooling problem. It just was not like severe or anything. It was a little bit more broken up, but there was still definitely pooling when I did it. So taking that into consideration combined with the fact that this is supposed to be a really fun, easy knit, something that I throw in my bag when I'm heading out, or it's like stress knitting or de-stress knitting when I've had it just up to here with the brioche socks that I'm trying to knit. And quite frankly, having to alternate skeins, having to carry two skeins with me, much less alternating skeins at all times it would be just such a pain in the- it would just be such a pain. <laughs> so I'm just going to deal with the pooling and I'm going to focus on how wonderful and lovely the fabric feels and how much I do really love these bright yellows and bright oranges that I'm getting out of this sweater. Now, speaking of my brioche socks, I have officially cast it on. This is now my third time casting on these socks because, as I will tell you shortly, I ended up having to do it again. And yes, I did pick my lipstick to match this yarn, so you're welcome. First of all, I need to admit that it was just a little bit arrogant of me to say that I thought that learning brioche was not going to be that hard. Certainly, it was not some Herculean effort or anything like that, but it has definitely been much more difficult than I anticipated. It takes a lot more focus than what I'm used to doing for just, you know, your basic cuff. It's also uh, just about impossible to fix it when you have made a mistake in your brioche, as evidenced by the fact that I spent probably at least an hour trying to fix this mistake here that you can probably barely see, but I am very aware of. I actually had an incident 
the incident with the knitting. I had an incident because I was trying to try this sock on and you will notice that I am only using three needles and then a fourth for my working needle. That's very unusual for me. I basically always use four needles and then a fifth working needle. But while I was working on this, I wanted to try it on. So I tried to slip this onto my leg over my foot, obviously, and apparently wooden needles don't bend they break. <laughs> so like I said, I am very not used to using the triangle formation. I usually do it in fours and so when I tried to try it on, I very successfully broke my needle right in half. <laughs> Fortunately, these Knit Picks needles, I didn't realize this somehow, but they come with six needles rather than five, which is perfect because that gives me exactly one extra because I have never used five needles and then one working needle. So of course, when I broke it, I also lost a bunch of stitches. And normally losing stitches is not a big deal. I have gotten really good at picking up stitches. I no longer worry that much when it comes to trying anything on over losing my stitches or anything. It's just something that comes with time. If anyone is watching this and you're a newer knitter, I promise you that within a couple of years, you will also feel very confident in picking up stitches. Except maybe brioche stitches, but I'm not going to take it out and there's one main reason, well there's two main reasons. First of all, you can barely tell that I have messed up at all. And the second reason is that I'm pretty sure that I am going to have to take this out again. I shouldn't say pretty sure. I should say that there is a distinct possibility that I will have to take this out again. So as anyone who has knitted brioche before probably would have warned me, brioche is kind of like knitting almost double or at least a third more of the stitches than what you cast on. So I cast on my usual 64 stitches when I started this and by the time I had I had nearly finished the cuff, I realized that it was definitely too big. I was unusually clever for me and I remembered to take some pictures. So after knitting too many rows in brioche before realizing this, I took it all out and I cast on with 16 fewer stitches. When you have a 64 count sock, each needle usually holds 16 stitches, so I just got rid of one needle, which is why I'm working on just three needles. Anyway, so I cast on with fewer stitches and that was when I, after knitting a few rows, decided to try it on, then broke one of my needles. But I am prepared to pull this out again if I need to. I just am not sure how snug the brioche is going to get around my thigh. Nope, not my thigh, my calf. <laughs> Again, this is something that probably anyone who has done brioche before could have warned me about when I decided to try this, but it feels very much like a brioche stitch is meant for like the texture, and I'm less certain that it's going to function at all as a decent rib to hold the socks up. I am still going to give it a shot. I am not holding out any hope for it though. I do have a backup plan. My backup plan is just to knit the body of the sock in this burgundy color and do the heels, cuffs, and toes in the orange. And there is also a bit of color work that I'm planning on doing, which would be, again, the orange would be the accent color to the burgundy. So I'm still in love with these two colors next to each other. That is not going to stop anytime soon, but I'm just not so sure about this brioche, which is really sad because I was so excited for it. I'm still really glad that I took the time to learn brioche. I mean, I'm sure it is a very valuable skill to have in my knitting arsenal, and I'm really proud of myself for taking the time to learn it. I'm just not certain that it's exactly right for this project, and that's okay. Moving right along, I have a little bit of stash enhancement to show you guys, and I am including it in this whips segment because it is irrelevant. I have decided to cast on the Grants cardigan. So, a little bit of story time. I I am the godmother to this adorable, amazing, 
perfect angel, Gwen, Taylor's daughter, and Taylor is having family photos done in November, I believe. Because I am godmother, I have been included in the family photos, and those family photos, everyone is supposed to dress in fall colors, so burgundies and like mustards or golds, and I am so, so excited to be included in these family photos. It means so much to me, and Taylor just happened to mention, and I'm not entirely positive, that she didn't do this knowing that I would catch on to the suggestion. But I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt and assume that she will be incredibly surprised that I'm doing this. But she bought her daughter a, I think, cream-colored dress, and she was saying how she would love to have a mustard-colored cardigan with burgundy cuffs for Gwen for the pictures. But she said she just didn't have time to knit it because she's busy. She has a job. She has a baby. So, as godmother, I feel that it is really my duty to provide said cardigan. Now, I know for a fact that Taylor loves the Gramps cardigan. So the Tin Can Knits pattern, like most of the Tin Can Knits patterns, I think, they have sizing available from baby to many sizes in the adult sphere. But the main photo for the Gramps cardigan is a little toddler who is just barely walking, and it is so cute. And that picture of the cardigan, which I have at some point put up on the screen. It has the main parts of the cardigan knit in one color and then the cuffs and also the button band and the collar knit in another color. And I'm like, I can do that. So enter this yarn, which I got at my local yarn store. It is not yarn that I have ever used before. It's Jojo Land Tempo and it is in the color Old Gold. And then this burgundy one is Ruby Wine. Now, I have been dying for an excuse to go to my uh, local yarn store. I actually got a gift card there from my parents for my birthday, but I have been holding back because I wanted to actually have a purpose to going. I wanted to have a project in mind that I was going to buy yarn for. So I finally have that, and I am very, very excited to cast this on. I'm also excited because I expect that it will not take nearly a fraction as long as all of my other sweaters are taking. And I absolutely adore these colors. I am such a fall freak. So working with these colors is going to be just a joy. The yarn is an acrylic wool mix. It's 80% acrylic, 20% wool. There were some other options that I thought about going with, but se this seemed like the best option given that it's a baby knit. It's always good to have something that is going to be machine washable. But while I I was at the local yarn store. I just could not say no to a little bit more self-striping yarn. I know, I know, I know that I do not need more self-striping yarn, but I just couldn't say no, guys. It is so pretty, and it's got these green, bright green and bright red stripes, and they're gonna be such cool Christmas socks. And I had a gift card. I didn't pay any personal money for this. I have also really been wanting to try West Yorkshire spinners. There was a podcast that I watch on and off. I can't remember for the life of me what it's called, but I will link it. There will be a card to that channel and in the description down below, of course, as well. And the person on that channel, every time she brought out her West Yorkshire spinners colorways, I was obsessed. I was constantly looking at how I was gonna get my hands on some of it, and then it showed up in my local yarn shop, and I am so ecstatic to have some of this. Speaking of self-striping sock yarn, I did get my Felici order in. I wanted to show off the color that I got, which is Red Rocks, which is honestly even more beautiful in person than it was on the website. I am so happy with this purchase. I just love how bright and vibrant these colors are and they just go so well together. I'm really, really excited to knit this. I have been having to kind of force myself not to cast these on. I have 
more than enough projects on the needles right now. I need to finish something before I cast on anything else. Specifically, I need to finish a pair of socks because I have my brioche socks on the needles and I have another pair of self-striping socks on the needles. So I need to finish at least one of those before I'm allowed to cast these on, but I really, really want to. They're just so gorgeous. Finally, let's talk cross-stitch. Yes, guys, I finished my fa-la-la cross-stitch. Isn't it stunning? I just love it. I am so happy with how it turned out. The sheep are just as adorable as I had hoped they'd be in their little Santa hats. The words look beautiful, the border is fantastic, all these little details are so cute. I need to get some hoops to start framing these. I need to frame this one and I need to frame my little teacup that I made. Speaking of the teacup, I have to say this cross stitch was exponentially harder than the little cutie cross stitch that I did before. Mostly it was in the details. All these little snowflakes were rather difficult, but mostly, and this is probably my own fault, it was these little details like the little flowers in the Christmas tree, the little flowers along the, on the snow here. When I cross stitch, I like to take the thread as far as I can without cutting it. That impulse, I am fairly positive, comes from my history as a knitter. In knitting in general, you just try not to break the yarn as often as possible because then you have to weave in all those ends. It is way easier to weave in ends when you're using thread, so I really should break my thread more often than I do. And the result is that I end up with these big chunks where I'm trying to do all these delicate details and the back is just not cooperating. So it's a little bit hard to tell actually uh, without <laughs> experiencing it for yourself. But what I tended to do was anywhere that there was like these breaks in the white or in the green from the tree, I would just skip over those uh crosses in the back and so I would have a long string in the back or a long X in the back. And that didn't seem like a problem at all to me when I was working on just one color. But then as soon as you start getting those layered colors in there or having to do these little details, it became a little bit of a problem. Oh, here, you can tell it a little bit in this middle section of the Christmas tree. It's just a mess of thread back there because I just refused to cut the thread. Granted, I am positive that that is the wiser option when it comes to some of these, but with these intricate details, it just ended up causing me so much difficulty because it made it harder to find the hole that I was going back through when I had to go from back to front. I can't even necessarily say that I have learned my lesson with that because the carrying over the thread is just such a natural thing for me. It just feels like if two squares are close to one another, then why don't you just skip over the one in the middle? And it definitely made sense for doing that in like these sections, this section here where it was just like one color detail, that was fine. But as soon as you start layering more than that, it gets a little bit complicated. Anyway, my only other gripe about this is again, something that was entirely due to my own choice. And that is the way that the details turned out in the tree. That is actually, not because of the way that I layer thread on thread on thread on thread, but rather because of the fabric that I chose. This is technically supposed to be an ornament, so the weave of the fabric is supposed to be much, much tighter. It is supposed to be a much smaller project. But this Aida is what I had. It is, I want to say, 14 count, it might be 16 count, but I was supposed to work this on a 32 count. And obviously that makes a massive difference. I am okay with it. Like ultimately I still love this and how it turned out and I am very proudly going to put it on my wall. But if you look at the pattern or the picture that they put with the pattern, and I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but 
the flowers are just just a little bit more delicate here and so are the words going across. The X's end up looking a lot more grid-like. It just looks like a square. Whereas mine are especially up close or well mostly up close. They do look markedly like X's. And it just gives it a little bit less delicacy. It's not quite as pretty. It takes away from it just a little bit for me. Not any of the, like, the larger things. The sheep, I think, are still just utterly adorable. And again, I cannot say how much I still absolutely love this pattern. I am just going to be more mindful of my fabric choice in the future, which I think, honestly, is a very good lesson learned for an early cross-stitch student. <laughs> and anyway, as soon as you back this up a little bit, you basically do not notice the thing that I am complaining about. And since it's going to be up on my wall, I'm really not worried about it. Again, I love it and I can't wait to do my next project. But that is everything for this episode. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope to see you guys in two weeks. And please make sure to like and subscribe to please the great YouTube algorithm gods. And I will see you all next time. Bye!